We've got a little side project on the go here now, and this is Tom's Toy 5. Um, he had an XUD in it, XUD 9, 1.9, um, with a TDO4 and 9mm pump. Um, this is basically come here originally for a 11mm pump conversion, which was done and then tuned up, which then promptly shit the engine. Um, <laughs> so it stayed here. Um, I just tore the engine out of it. Well, actually, I haven't torn the engine out yet. The um, head's just off because it's basically to smash the bottom end up. Um, so I'm going to build up a new engine. For okay, on the floor here we've got a um, donor engine block. Um, Tom actually picked it up himself. I dropped it in here. Well, I went to pick it up. Um, I can't actually remember what it's out of, but it's just a standard XUD. Um, so I'm just going to tear this bottom end completely apart now. Put all the rods and the pistons out of it. As you can see, I've already got two out. Um, then I'm going to be fitting some HDI rods. Right, so I've got all the uh, rods and pistons out of the block now. Um, that's completely empty. I've just degreased best I can. Um, the crank's actually going to stay in the block. Um, I've already checked a couple of the mains. They're all fine. Um, so there's really no point disturbing the ends of it. Like I said, we're trying to save a bit of money here where we can. Um, so the crank's going to stay in the block. Um, just cleaned it out best we can. Um, I've just fitted a set of HDI rods to the pistons. Um, cleaned it all up, obviously. Um, they're the old bearings. We're actually going to be changing those bearings purely because they are fairly war. Um, you could probably see we're down to the copper, so we're through the white metal there. Um, so we're going to get them changed out. Um, but the rest of it's going to be left pretty much as is. Um, literally put it back together, talk everything up. Um, that'll be the bottom end sorted then. Okay, we've got the uh, rolls and pistons in the block now, so it's just a case of putting all the uh, big end caps on. Um, just going to put some assembly lube on the on that side of it as well, um, and then that'll get torqued down, and then the sump can go back on once the oil pump's on. Okay, you can set a uh, full set of ARP head studs. Um, they're actually the ones out of my engine that was in my DT. Um, they're going to be getting fitted to this block now, um, purely because we're going to be putting the VNT on, and um, without these, it will just be lifting the head every 30 seconds. So the aim is to put the engine together and leave it together. So we'll put them in now while it's apart. Okay, just clean the sump up now. Um, put the oil pump on the bottom here, and then the sump can be sealed up and bolted on. Shouldn't have to go in there again then. Okay, so we just uh, put this head studs in the block there now. Um, just worked out the threads with a tap before. Um, drop the head gasket on the top. Put sump on as well, um, just makes life a bit easier. Um, so pretty much time to drop the head on now. Um, but I've got two, ch two valves to a change in the head. Um, we're actually reusing the old cylinder head which is kind of dumped in the pile over there. And it's got two bent valves in it because of the last engine. So I've got to swap them out. So we'll do that next. Right, I'm missing... Um, a few parts I need to uh, put the engine back together. So I'm just going to spend a couple of hours just taking the old engine out of the 205. Um, obviously it's already sort of semi-stripped. I'm um, just taking it apart and discovered a bit of a new issue um, <laughs> with the gearbox mount, the uh, part that bolts to the chassis over here. Um, I just took the battery out to find that. Um, basically when it was bolted in, they've only bothered putting the top two bolts in. There's, there's another two bolts go you can just see the two bolt holes in in the frame there um, that's what's supposed to take most of the strain um, they've been neglected to be put in so it's all been hanging effectively on here and here um, as you can see one side snapped off um, so it wasn't really very far off the whole engine just dropping out the car <laughs> so that obviously going to need welding up and some bolts finding for that no big deal um, so yeah, we're going to take the engine out um, of the car, give it a bit of a blast through with the pressure washer. I've got it all disconnected here now, drop the trans oil, engine oil, um, just got one more drive shaft to put out, um, and then I'll bring the crane in. I'm in a bit of a tidy up of pipes and stuff here as well. Um, the heater matrix is kind of randomly plumbed a ridiculously long way around, so we're going to change that. And just a couple of other bits and pieces while we've got it apart here. Right, I've just torn the engine out of there now. Um, exposed to rather rotty engine bay. So we're going to get the pressure washer out now and pull, clean the crap out of this. Probably even some degrease on the back there. Um, just makes life a lot easier when you put it back together and you can actually stick your hand down the back of the engine without getting covered. Here's a slightly closer look at that engine bracket or gearbox mount bracket. Um, as you can see, there was very little holding that together. Um, these are the two bolt holes that should have bolts in. As you can see, they were missing, hence all the weight and the sideways motion 
torque, torque transfer, the engine was being pulled on that. Um, literally not very far away from dropping out the car. And after a thorough degrease. As you can see, I've got most of the engine built up now. Um, just basically bolting things to the block, pretty straightforward. Um, waiting on a few other parts. Um, the water pump out of his old engine, which was going to be reused. Like I said, this is a budget build, <laughs> so where, where new parts aren't needed, they aren't needed. But as you can see, he's been weeping water out of the weep hole, so definitely don't want to be reusing that. Um, so Tom is going to be bringing over another used one. I think it's actually the one that he was already stripped out of this block, so he'll be going back in again. Um, ideally, there would be a new water pump going in, but... Like I say, we're trying to save some money here, so um, we're going to put that one back in this block. I'm also waiting for a couple of dowels for the flywheel. Um, I'm just going to put the rocker cover on now, um, put the belt on once I've got the water pump, cam belt covers, and then we'll put the uh, clutch and trans back on, and then probably the rest of it, the stat housing and stuff, I'll probably leave off to us in the car, um, just because you're quite limited for space in the old 205. You can just see the um, ARP studs poking out the top there. Heads all torqued down, all job done. Right, um, got the engine on the floor here now, uh, got the water pump on, got a second hand one from Tom, so I put that one in, to put a new gasket behind it. Um, the belt's on, same belt because it was new when, well I think when Tom put the last engine in, so it's not very old. Uh, got the aux belt hooked up again, again it's all original, old tensioner, old belt. Um, it's all gone on, made some modifications to the alternator mount, um, it was a problem before with basically the belt wanted to run you can see how it's cut into the cover there. Um, it was running one notch off all the time on the aux, on the crank pulley, uh, basically because the alternator was sitting in the wrong place, uh, causing them to be out of line. So you can see they're dead in line there again now. And um, what I basically did was modified the bush that sits in the gap here. Uh, basically ground the end off that so there's no extra bush and put it over here instead, and then spaced across the top here, which gives you the clearance you need so the belt runs in line again. Um, so I'm going to put the trans on now, um, and once the tra oh, rock cover needs to go on, and then I'm actually going to try and drop it in the car without putting anything else on. That's a bit tight putting it in 205, so it's easy to bolt the rest of it to it once it's in the vehicle. A bit of a lack of videos, um, completely forgot again. Uh, the engine's in the car, I dropped it in from the top, um, put the gearbox mount back on after I've welded it up. This time it does have all four bolts holding it in. Um, both drive shafts are in. I'm just in the process now of mocking up a adapter plate and stuff that for the turbo, making that fit. Um, bought some basic water lines are hooked up, rerouted the heater matrix hoses because they used to come around here and it was ridiculous. So sacked off one of the steel pipes, put it down the back. Uh, gear linkages are on. It's really just a case of getting the turbo to fit now and just putting the rest of the ancillaries on. Okay, stage one is to bolt the hot side onto the engine because we need to clock this turbo so it's pointing the right way. So we're going to bolt this up and then line up where we want the other bit and take it back on the bench and put it back together again. Okay, so we're just um, stripping down the, well, the original actuator, which used to be a back actuator, um, operated by the ECU. So we're going to do the same as we've done the Audi, straight my car. Um, the simplest and easy way of running these VNTs when you haven't, well, haven't got the money straight time to uh, invest in sort of proper electronic control. Um, it's to literally just run them off a manual boost controller with a, with a boost can. Um, it's better to try and use these original cans because they've got more travel in them and a bit more suitable spring. So all I'm going to do is basically move this spring so it's the other side of this diaphragm so that it turns it from a vacuum can into a boost can. And then I'm going to press it back together again and then we're going to refit. Okay, you can see that's back together again now. A bit rough around the edges but doesn't matter, it does a job. Um, so now when you apply pressure to that side, it will push out rather than having to apply a suction to there to pull it in. Hang on a minute, what's the camera out for? Right well, in the radge of the system. You said it's professional, so... Well, yeah. Alright. Alright, we've been working on this this afternoon. Um, bit of a video fail just because I've been pretty busy doing it and I keep forgetting to pick the camera up, to be honest, a bit out of practice. Um, it's all in on the mounts now. Um, I've got mm, electrics hooked up just really to make sure things are in the right places. I'm cutting the loom back because there's plugs that are not being used. Um, just getting all the wiring tidied up because it was just all over the place. Um, sorted out the final heater matrix hoses. Actually, I changed one of the hoses in the end because it just didn't like to fit how I wanted it. Changed the expansion tank because the old one had a um, crack in it. 
I've hooked up the fuel lines. Um, it's going to be changed slightly as uh, Tom's going to be running a different filter assembly, but I'm hoping, well, I'm going to suggest that he puts the filter at the back um, just so it's out of the way because we're a bit tight for space. Um, the turbo is all on, um, all bolted up, high pressure oil fitted, uh, low pressure return also fitted. Um, downpipe is all welded up onto a new flange. So the same downpipe that was on the car before, um, welded to a different flange on the new turbo. Um, the biggest problem really that we've got to overcome is the compressor being pointing the wrong way. Um, if anyone's got a well, a compressor housing for our 52mm GT series that's got the normal pointy up the front thing and make life a lot easier here. Um, but it's looking like we're going to have to try and come up with some sort of solution around the corner there, um, which is probably going to hold things up because I don't have any silicons here. So I'm really just sorting electrics out right at this moment in time. Um, I've just bolted up this glow plug job over here. I've drilled a hole in it because it was just floating around the engine bay before. Like I say, I'm going to reshoot these wires um, sort out the fan wiring a bit more tidily then we're going to move on to the cooling system most of it's done, there's just a few last connections to make namely the air bleeds up to the header tank because that was all, all over the shop before so we're going to try and tidy that up somewhat um, but yeah, I've, I've wound it over um, a minute ago just as if we had oil pressure um, the light goes out when I've got it connected directly here um, I'm yet to connect it to the dash um, that was actually not working on the old engine so it's one of the things I need to get working because it's quite important although Tom has now purchased some uh, oil pressure and oil temp gauges um, although there's going to be issues in itself because there's not clearance here to put the sandwich plate in so either we're going to have to get an oil cooler sack off the sandwich plate or possibly move the radiator. I'm not really very happy with the radiator mount anyway, so I think that might be the better solution. Okie dokie. Okay, so I've just got it running now. We're going to bleed the cooling system. Um, it's all fill up. I've um, spent quite a bit of time tidying all the wiring and the pipe work and just changing the way it was routed really. Try and tidy it up and make it more efficient. Um, so that's pretty much how the bare engine is going to sit. It's all bled well. We're just bleeding it up now. Uh, fuel system is sort of all hooked up, cooling's all hooked up and the wiring is all hooked up. Right, I've got all the wiring and the plumbing done in the engine bay here now. Um, I've really tried to tidy it up a lot from how it was, just because there was wires and stuff everywhere. Um, so we've put new loom in, well it's the same loom but I've cut out all the connectors that weren't used before. Um, put it all inside, proper ducting, etc. Cable tied it all nice and tidy. Um, downpipe is all done. You can just see it hiding away in there. It's a bit dark out here. Um, I'm just working on putting the exhaust on now. Um, so, it should bolt up fairly easily. Um, it's the same system from the downpipe back. We just redid the downpipe. In fact, we used most of the original downpipe, just changed the flange and the angle of the down slightly because it used to have too much down, it used to touch the subframe, um, which is very annoying because it used to vibrate, so we fixed that while it was apart, um, so we're working on that at the moment. Right, we've got a bit of a setup going on here, um, we've had a bit of an issue with the 205, uh, part of the gearbox casing is broken off, um, now we really don't want to be dropping the gearbox, so we're going to try and weld it on, um, but as anyone that knows me know, I haven't had a MIG for a couple of weeks, well a couple of months, because I killed it, um, and to weld aluminium, my only way of doing it, is with one of these MIG spool guns, which I know is far from ideal, but it gets the job done. Now, I've borrowed a welder off Tom, um, however it's not Euro MIG, so I can't plug my spool gun in. Um, it also doesn't have a gas on valve in it, because it's cheap and it just has like a valve in the thing. So, what we've done here is I've hooked in the wire feed and the trigger to Tom's welder um, via these cables you can see boost across here. Then we've got the high side, which is being fed from the other welder via this jump lead to here, which gives us high on that welder Euro MIG output using this welder's ground. And uh, when I pull the trigger, we get wire feed and high. Only trouble is, we haven't got gas solenoid. Um, I could wire in the relay, but for the purpose of what we need to weld, which is going to take about five minutes, we've just got Chris up here on the battery charger, which works the gas. So, the battery charger's there. Connected into the uh, <laughs> solenoid down there. It's not pretty at all, but that's a robust it's situation. I'm just going to hope it's going to get us out the shit here, so let's go and get the welding mask and see what we can do. Right, hopefully, this should be the last video. Um, we're all back together now. 
had a bit of a disaster with the starter. Um, I can't remember if I videoed it or not, but basically the starter motor originally was only held in by two bolts um, on the old engine, and it actually cracked the casting on the gearbox, which when we put it together didn't really look that bad. It just looked like a bit of a crack. So we sort of left it alone, thinking put all three bolts in, it'll be all right. Well, typically, um, well, about a week after we put this back together, I went and started it, turned the key, and the starter was grinding and crunching and not sounding good. Then I thought I was going to have to drop the gearbox, but we managed to um, cobble together some welders, as you saw in the other video, on the other camera. So I've just finished off the boost pipes. Um, I've completely changed the way it's rooted. Um, it used to come down through under the throttle cable here and wedged in between here, and it's just sort of catching on everything. I wasn't t too much of a fan of it, so I kind of changed that around a bit. Um, we've had a real difficulty getting it past um, for the turbo down the back here because there was literally no room at all. Um, I think really in the future the best thing to do here would be to try and find a straight outlet for the you know, compressor housing, which wouldn't be too difficult, and just do away with that slight bodge because it's touching the master cylinder, which is far from ideal. Um, but yeah, we're all connected up. Should be able to fire up with lead up with coolant, fill up with oil, and ready, ready to start doing a bit of tuning. Um, everything in the car works. Got the radiator fans. Oh, that one, which you can just hear. Um, oil pressure light is now hooked in and working. As you can see, if I just flip the ignition off, that wasn't working previously, hence Tom had no idea the oil pressure dropped. He's actually bought some gauges now as well, um, so it should be pretty good once it's put back together. It's on 100% veg at the moment. 